Hi, you all. It is me again. And here we are talking about 1.3, which is inverses. So how do we find the inverse of a function? And the answer to that question is right in this first pink box. To find the inverse of a function, we're going to switch our x and our y and solve for y. And it's just that easy. I want you to notice that um, notation for a function. We're using that little exponent of a negative 1. So we see f to that negative one power of x. And we don't read it that way. We just say, we just say you know, it's the inverse of the function f of x. Um, but that is the notation that we use. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in example one. It says find the inverse of the function two x plus four. Our first step says to switch the x and the y. Well, I know we don't see a y, but I'm hoping you know that f of x is the same thing as our y. So if you need to write this step in, please do so. Now we can switch our x and our y, and so we will have x equals 2y plus 4. And at this part, we are simply solving for that y value. We are isolating that variable. That's something that you have been doing for a long time. So, of course, we're going to subtract our 4 first and then divide by 2. So we have x minus 4 over 2 equals y. If you would like to simplify that, you can. Um, and if you'd like to break up those two fractions, that might be beneficial for us. So I'm going to come over here, use my function, I'm sorry, inverse notation for the function f of x. And I'm going to say that this is 1 half x minus 2 because those are the same exact things. Is it wrong if you leave it like this? No, it's just not um, completely simplified. So we want to get in that habit of simplifying as much as we can. All right. Now notice the second part of example one is using a graph. So notice in the pink box, it says the graphs are reflections over the line y equals x. The line y equals x is that line going through the origin that has a slope of one. So the coordinates on that line are one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, et cetera. So this is that line y equals x that is going to be the line of reflection for inverses. So hopefully that sounds familiar from your geometry class that you took last year, that line of reflection. Um, so when we have a function and it's inverse, they are going to be reflected over that line. Okay, so um, it says sketch f of x and that inverse. And we're using the same problem in, from example one. So f of x, 2x plus 4, I'll go ahead and do it in this pink color. 2x plus 4 has a y-intercept of 4, so that's here, and it has a slope of positive 2. So up 2 over 1, down 2 left 1. Hopefully you remember how to graph a line. So here is our f of x graph. And so now that if I'm reflecting over this line f of x, I know that I have this that I can graph. We already know the inverse, but if I want to incorporate using this rule of finding the inverse, using a graph to help me do that, then I'm going to go ahead and make it that darker purple. What I can do is I can use the coordinates on this graph to help me out. I know that the point 0, 4 is on my graph, so if I flip that coordinate location, and plot 4 comma 0, then I have just reflected over that line. I also know that the point 1 comma 6 is on my function, so if I flip that around, 6 comma 1 will be on the inverse. The point negative 1 comma 2, so 2 negative 1, et cetera, et cetera. You'll also notice the slope in the original function was 2. What is the slope here? 1 half. It's the reciprocal. So I can also use that slope to help me out. Also notice we had a point on our function that was actually on that line of reflection. So you know that from geometry, if there was something on the line of reflection, it stayed there. And so that point negative four, negative four is obviously on both our function and our inverse. And so we have this, oops, kind of messed that one up, but there you go. And so now you can visually see that they are inverses of each other because that it has been reflected over that line y equals x. Okay. And then just something to note is that inverses are not reciprocals of one another. I know that I said our slope was the reciprocal. Our slope of the function was 2 and the slope of the uh, of the inverse was the reciprocal. It was 1 half. But that doesn't mean the inverse of a function is the reciprocal of that function. That's not the same thing.
Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, moving on. Oops, get rid of that. Sketch, oh my God, go away. Okay, it says sketch the inverse of the graph below on the same coordinate plane. Is the inverse a function? And then find the domain of the range of the function and the inverse. So here we have this function um, looking like a semicircle, kind of. And so we want to use that graph technique to graph the um, inverse. So I'm going to go ahead and use that same blue color. And I'm going to draw my line of reflection just because it helps me. You do not have to do that if you do not want to. And I'm going to use that trick, like I said earlier, about um, flipping those coordinate locations. Think about that first step algebraically. It says switch the X and the Y. That's what we're doing right now. If I have a coordinate location at 0, 3, then I know on the inverse, I'm switching my X and Y. It's going to be 3, 0, which is right here. So this point became this point. All right, and I can do that for you know a couple of different points on this graph. I know that there is a point on the function of negative three comma zero. So if I switch that around, so graphing that inverse function, um, we had a point at negative three comma zero. So then that's going to be at zero comma three on our inverse. Another point was three comma zero. So um, we will have one at zero comma three, and I put that in the wrong spot earlier. But here is what. Our inverse would it look like so it is overlapping which makes sense because now that looks like a reflection over that line y equals x so let me kind of shade right underneath it so we can still see that gray um, function so we are looking for the domain and the range of both the original function and the inverse function so domain remember those are our x values from left to right so for the function we are going from negative 3 to positive 3. And for the range of the function, that's our y values from bottom to top, we are going from 0 to 3. Now I'm looking at my uh, domain and range of the inverse. And so domain, again, the x values from left to right. So looking at that hot pink graph, my x values would be from 0 to 3. And my range would be from negative 3 to positive 3. So I want you to take a look at the domain and the range of the function and the domain and the range of the inverse and see if you notice anything. I think you do, huh? Do you see this? That the domain of the function is the range of the inverse and the range of the function is the domain of the inverse. And I want you to think to yourself, is that going to happen every time? Is that just a coincidence or is this something that's a characteristic of inverses. It is. It is a characteristic of inverses. Think about it. To find the inverse, you're switching your x and your y. x goes with domain. y goes with range. You're switching them for the inverse. So this is always going to happen. The domain of the function will be the same thing as the range of the inverse, and the range of the function will be the domain of the inverse. This is a great way to check yourself. Um, it's also kind of like a a little cheat like you can just do the domain and the range of the inverse and then boom you got the domain and the range of the uh, of the function vice versa so let's try that again so the second question is oh we forgot to answer is the is the inverse a function so on my hot pink uh, graph in part a is it a function we're gonna say no because it doesn't pass that vertical line test all right, so we're doing the same thing in part B. Again, I'm going to draw that line y equals x. You don't have to, but it helps me visually. And so it's there. Okay, and so I'm going to use some of those points on my original function to get some points on my inverse. So I see a good point at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the point 0, 5. So I'm going to go to 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Plot that point. I also see a point at 1, 4. So then I'm going to go to 4, 1. Plot that point. I also see a pretty good point right here. And that's at 4, 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to go to 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so now I can kind of start to see that inverse take shape. And it looks like it's a reflection over that line. So I'm feeling good about my graph. 
I can already answer the question if that inverse is a function, and my answer to that is going to be yes, it is, because it does pass that vertical line test, all right? And so now we can fill in our domain and our range. I'm going to add something to this first graph. This first graph should have an arrow on it just to make our domain and range a little bit easier. So what is the domain of the original function? Well, it's starting at zero and it's going all the way to infinity. What is the range of that original function from bottom to top, negative infinity, all the way up to that value of five? Okay, we already know the trick that this is gonna be the domain and that's gonna be the range of the inverse, but let's go ahead and verify that on our graph. So the domain of that inverse from left to right, it is gonna be from negative infinity till that x value of five. And our range is gonna be bottom to top from zero to infinity. So I'm feeling good because it matches the characteristic and it matches my graph. The last thing that we want to talk about is if we have two functions and we know that they are inverses of one another, then the composition of them is always going to equal x. So going back on that notation of composition, if we put g of x inside of f of x, it will reduce to x. And if we put f of x inside of g of x, it will also reduce to x. And we have to do it both times, okay? If two functions are truly inverses of one another, then the way that we can check that is composing one inside the other, okay? So here I have two functions, f of x and g of x. So I'm gonna do my f of g of x first. And so that means I'm putting all of g of x inside of the x and the f of x function. Sorry, I'm getting blown up. All right, so I have three times one third x plus one third inside that x minus one. When I distribute that three, I just get x plus one minus one, positive one and negative one cancel out. I just get x. That makes me feel really good because half of it is done. Okay, that's what I want to see. I want to see it reduce all the way down to x. So now I have to do the other way around. I have to compose g of f of x. So I have to do the other way around. So I need to put my 3x minus 1 inside of there. Again, I'm going to distribute that 1 third. That's going to give me an x minus 1 third plus 1 third. Those cancel out. I'm just left with x. I'm a happy camper. So I know that yes, they are inverses of each other. I have to do both guys. I have to do both. All right. Now in example four, I'm giving you tables. One of them is the function of f of x and one of them is the function of g of x. And we're gonna determine if they're inverses by the values in those, in those tables. And I want you to think about what we talked about earlier. To find the inverse, we are switching the x and the y. So all we need to do here is look at the coordinates of one function and make sure they're flipped in the other function. And that's gonna tell us if they're inverses of each other. So it's hard to tell within this first because the x and the y are the same. So negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. Then we have negative 1, 1. So if they were inverses of each other, then they would be flipped. 1 comma negative 1. That's good. 0 comma 4, 4 comma 0. That's good. 1 comma 7, 7 comma 1. That's good. 2, 10, 10, 2. That's good. Yes, they are inverses of each other. You have to switch that x and that y in order for it to be an inverse. So when I see, when I go over to b and I see 2, 8 in this first function, that's like writing the coordinate 2, 8, then the inverse would have to be 8, 2. Well, is it? No, because I'm seeing 2, negative 8. That's not a function. I mean, that's not inverses of one another. I can stop right there because no. They're not inverses. I don't care what the rest of the graph says. That one point will prove that they are not inverses of each other. Okay? And then our last example says find the inverse of the function f of x shown by the mapping below is the inverse of function. And so we have our f of x as negative 4, negative 2, 0, negative 3, 1, 2, and 4, 2. Again, to get that inverse, we're switching our x and our y values. We're switching our input and our output. This is our x, this is our y. So if over here we had the point negative 4, comma negative 2, then we need to switch that to say negative 2, negative 4. We had the point 0, comma 3, I'm sorry, 0, comma negative 3, so now we have negative 3 to 0. 
we have one comma two and we have four comma two. So two, one, but two also is gonna give us four. Is that a function? No. I know you can't visually see to t use that vertical line test, but you know that a function for every input, there is one unique output, and this is messing us up, okay? So that inverse is not a function, okay? They are inverses of each other. No matter what this function is, these are the inverses. I mean, this is the inverse, but it's just not a function, and that's okay. There we go.